Hi, this is John with the Jesus Bible Study. So glad to have you here with us today. And we're looking at the book of Matthew. We're in, I believe it's the fifth chapter of the book of Matthew. And we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount, the most important sermon that was ever proclaimed. And this was spoken by Jesus Christ himself. And I'm going to hit this to see if we can make it focus a little bit better. I don't know if it's working or not. But um, he uh, gave this message to a large crowd. And uh, this message can impact your life in so many different ways. Basically, now Jesus had just said that he came to not do away with the law of Moses, the law that was given to God by God, but he said that he came to fulfill the law. And he will actually reinterpret the law, as we see in a couple of various areas. And actually, he's going to make the law tougher. And uh, because... Uh, uh, he wants the people to live a holy life. And uh, he uh, does this in a couple of ways. One, if you have faith in him, then you can be born again, and God can forgive you of your sins. And then the righteousness of Christ is applied to you. And then he wants people to be sanctified by the Holy Spirit uh, so that we can live a life of holiness in the, in the Lord. And uh, he's telling us that our old interpretation of the law, it's not complete, and he's going to fulfill it. And we're just going to look at anger. And many of us have a lot of anger issues. We hold grudges, and we hold uh, you know, bad feelings toward other people. But Jesus doesn't want us to do that. And he's basically telling us how to deal with anger in our life here. Verse 21 of chapter 5, it says, You have heard uh, that it was said uh, to those of old, You shall not murder. And whoever murders will be liable of judgment. And uh, that was uh, one of the Ten Commandments. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother uh, will be liable to judgment. And what was the judgment of the Old Testament? Well, it, it was execution if you murdered somebody. Uh, they had capital punishment back then. They didn't shy from it. And uh, they would take somebody's life if they took another person's life. And... Uh, it says here, um, who is angry if his brother will be liable of judgment. So basically, if you're angry for your brother, you should die for that. And it says, uh, whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So Jesus taught us about hell and said, basically, we could be facing eternal judgment if we stayed angry with our brothers and sisters. So if you are offering a gift at the altar and you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift before the altar and go. And first be reconciled with your brother and then come and offer the gift. So if you've got anger against somebody, get it worked out. And uh, then uh, you're uh, in such a position that you can start to worship God. Uh, you're not living in anger, living with this condemnation of death upon you. And said, first be reconciled to your brother, then come and offer your gift. And God will accept your worship. Uh, come to terms quickly with your accuser while you're going with him to court. Lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard, and you'll be put into prison. Uh, let's say, for instance, that uh, uh, you've destroyed somebody's property, and they're taking you to court. Uh, if you can make restitution to that person, and he drops the charges, then uh, you're not looking at a jail sentence. And uh, Jesus is telling us to work out our anger issues uh, before we come before God and before we come before judges. And uh, so it comes uh, terms quickly. So truly I say to you, you'll never get out until you've paid your last penny. And they had debtor's prisons back then. You could be put in, um, you know, now we have people with credit card debt and they owe tens, 20,000, you know, just huge amounts of money. Uh, have student loan debt, and uh, we have uh, mortgages and that sort of thing. And but uh, back then, if you owed a debt, you had a certain amount of time to pay it. And if you didn't pay it by that time, you'd be put in prison. And then you had to come up with the money while you're in prison, while you couldn't earn uh, a living wage. And some people would die in debtors' prisons. And if they had family, they might work to try to get them out. But uh, some people, uh, maybe they didn't have. Uh, family members or stuff that cared about them. And uh, they would just basically die and rot in prison. Back in those days, they didn't even feed you in prison most of the time. 
if uh, you if you had if you got put into prison you had to have other people bring you food uh, if otherwise you would have the possibility of starving to death and now Jesus is going to talk about another sin and this is one that touches us very closely he's going to talk about lust and says you've heard uh, that it was once said you shall not commit adultery what is adultery it's sex outside of marriage and it said but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart for if your right eye causes you to sin tear it out and throw it away for it's better that you lose one of your members than your whole body be thrown into hell now we don't really know of many cases at all of someone actually doing what Jesus is saying here but he's saying it's more important uh, you know if you had an eye that caused you to lust or uh, you have a hand that uh, you used to sin with then it'd be better to uh, pluck that eye out and to cut that hand off than uh, your whole body being thrown into hell because uh, you're, this sin is so dangerous for you spiritually that if you don't get it taken care of then uh, it could lead you to hell and adultery could lead you to hell and it says if your right hand causes you to sin cut it off and throw it away for it's better that if you lose one of your members than your whole body go into hell so that's it may seem like Jesus is exaggerating here and uh, I, I'm not sure if he used some exaggeration or if he's uh, you know, speaking totally literally. But he's making a very good point here that uh, sin is unbelievably deadly, much more dangerous than we think it is. And he's just kind of giving us an example of how dangerous it is. And it can lead a person to hell. And, you know, we have this lust thing going on. Um, that's one reason that uh, we should never, ever look at pornography. And you say, well, that's a victimless crime. Well, that's what the devil wants you to think. Uh, because you're a victim of the crime if uh, you're looking at it. Uh, it could lead your soul to hell. And uh, you're lusting. Uh, you're having sexual desire for somebody that uh, you don't even have a relationship with, let alone uh, you're not getting together with that person and building a relationship and uh, a lifelong bond and family as God intended. And uh, it's, uh, it's if you're looking at pornography on a willful basis, um, you know, you can have things pop up on your computer and get rid of them real quick and get that thought out of your head. And, uh, you know, that's temptation. That's not sin. But if you decide to continue to look and to think about, uh, you know, a naked person or a person involved in a sex act, then uh, that's that's your heart lusting and uh, it could be a very tempting thing because that other person may be very attractive and uh, but sex is meant for marriage uh, God wants us to get together and to have relationships and to um, he, he he's not against sex uh, God very much is in favor of sex he created sex he created it so that man and woman can uh, come together and he does refer for sex to be with men and women uh, I know that's controversial and a lot of people see that differently but this is the way that God intended it in the Bible and uh, he wants us to come together and uh, to create families and to raise children uh, to raise families uh, that will uh, be a glue for society and if we deviate from uh, sex in a way that uh, God intended, then uh, you know we're, it, it's going to hurt society. It's going to hurt us uh, spiritually as well as physically. And divorce. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, uh, give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you, and they had no fault divorces back then, as we do now. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except for the grounds of sexual immorality makes her commit adultery, and whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. So we see here that uh, Jesus uh, was showing us that God hates divorce, and he doesn't want us to divorce. Uh, but there are a couple of biblical instances where divorce is found to be acceptable. It's never a good thing. But uh, if uh, someone has committed adultery against you, then you do have the grounds for divorce. And uh, also, uh, in the writings of Paul, we see it uh, being such that if somebody abandons you, then uh, that that can also be grounds for divorce. It's just not quite as clear 
as the adultery um, um, information that's in the Bible. But uh, it does seem to be an acceptable situation. And, uh, uh, but, uh, you know, we should try to avoid divorce at all costs, if at all possible. Uh, marriages are meant to last forever and uh, or un until the other partner dies. So uh, we need to live God's plan for that. And um, we see Jesus talking now about retaliation. He says, you've heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist the one that's evil. But if anyone slaps you on the right cheek, uh, go ahead and turn the other to him also. Uh, so, you know, if they slap you in the face, allow them to slap the other side of the face. Also, if anyone would sue you and take away your tunic, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone forces you to go one mile, and this was a common thing with the Roman soldiers, they could just stop a person in the street, and they may have to carry their pack, which could weigh, um, I don't know exactly how, how big, I'm, I'm thinking it's over 60 pounds, but uh, they may have to carry this for the mile, because, you know, they'd walk with these, and uh, it'd be a, a great burden for the soldiers. So, basically, a lot of times they would just uh, pick a guy off the street and say, walk with me for a mile, carry my pack, and then you'd have to do it. And uh, you would be subject to be put into prison if you didn't. And uh, Jesus is saying, if somebody asks, forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles. And uh, give to the one who begs from you. And do not refuse to go uh, to the one who would borrow from you. And this might seem like you're a pushover, okay, if you do these things. But he's basically showing us that we're to have an attitude of love for our brothers and sisters. And for other people. It says love your enemies. You've heard it said that you should love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I said you love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you. So that you may be sons of your father that is in heaven. For he makes us, excuse me, for he makes his son rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain to the just and the unjust. For if you love those that only love you, what reward uh, do you have? Uh, do you not even... Uh, Excuse me, do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if the excuse me, if you greet only your brothers, uh, what more will you be doing to others? Uh, do not even the Gentiles do the same? For you, therefore, must be perfect, as your Heavenly Father is perfect. So we should uh, love and uh, we should, uh, you know, be kind uh, to all the people that we come in contact with. And uh, it's... Um, uh, sometimes a difficult thing to do when people treat us uh, poorly, but uh, we're to be different, and uh, we're to show the love of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ loved everyone, and we're to show that same love and same compassion and caring. Well, let's pray. Dearly Father, thank you for your word today, and thank you for this message, and Lord, let us see that the Christian life is a different way, and uh, help us uh, to understand the fullness of your law and to live in the way that Jesus Christ intended. And Lord, we know we can't always do this by our own power because these concepts sometimes seem very foreign to us. So Lord, we just pray that those that are watching, that they'll be born again, believe on Christ, then they'll be filled with the Holy Spirit and fill them full of love and compassion for their fellow man. And Lord, uh, uh, teach us to treat other people the way uh, that uh, we should be treated and the way that you treat us with love and compassion. This we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining the Jesus Bible Study. And uh, uh, join us next time as we continue to get into the book of Matthew and share this with other people. And um, uh, share the word of God with other people because the word of God and these words of Christ are transforming. And uh, we're to be made into new creations in Christ as we have faith in Jesus Christ. He's the one that saved us from our sin and cleanses us and leads us into righteous living. So until next time, this is John with the Jesus Bible Study saying bye. Hi, this is John with the Jesus Bible Study.